Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent on uh, our laddering episodes. Since this is probably going to be my last laddering episode of the month of the season, I just wanted to make a special episode where we go through the decks that we've been using in the past episodes. So, to start off with the first deck we used, we have the Chitin Charge with the Kikimore Queen and the Araka Swarm ability. Uh, as you can see, this is the deck composition. I'm not going to go into too much detail right now. We'll just use it in a match in a second and we'll do the explanation there. So, this is more going to be uh, an explanatory episode than just uh, me playing normally like i do the other ladder episodes i'm really gonna try and explain how this deck fits together and what the best plays are with e with each deck so this is going to be our first deck the chitin charge so we're facing another monster deck which is fine kind of makes me allows me to showcase what i want to do with this deck um because this, this deck basically works around either big monsters and insectoids or thrive uh, both work kind of in tandem, as you'll see in a second. I'm just going to get rid of uh, Predatory Dive, since we won't be able to use that. Double the Intriga Larva is fine. And then I could technically go with Natural Selection and just get rid of Hideous Feast. And maybe even the Intriga Eggs. Yes, let's do it like this. And that gives us our first card for our... Uh, well... Along with Whispers, we actually have enough to make our uh, final combo, the most impressive combo of this deck, work in the last round, which is definitely something I want to show you guys. But in the first round, just try to make it work with a bit of a try functionality. So let's start with the Larva, do it like that, and end the turn with that. So first round is basically try to make Thrive work for you. So um, using some lower level uh, units with the tribe ability and then just starting your start working your way up so we get the broxa which also has tribe but that's not really that much of a problem we can then use the kikimori warrior to just start going with tribe there we uh, go and then i'm just gonna boost that one and regal larva with my tactical advantage like that so here we go so that's our first, uh, yeah, it's a bit weird that they didn't use the fruit in the first round there, but that's that. So double Broxa means double bleeding, but that doesn't trigger the tribe of the other units. But could use natural selection to just get another uh, drone on the field, but we're going to start working towards our... Um, are insectoids because the first round is all about tribe and insectoids so the Andrega queen is perfect for that consume an allied unit and gain its armor we do that on the worker because the worker is vulnerable it gets destroyed when its armor is gone but if you use the Andrega queen on top of that you actually turn those four points of armor into even more points so there we go and now this unit will create a drone every turn as long as it has armor there we go. And since it consumes the other unit, it also goes high enough to trigger the, the Thrive abilities of the Larvas as well. So now we have double Thrive set up for uh, Pugo Boombreaker, I think so. Yeah, let's just use Pugo and just blow our opponent out of the water as quickly as possible. There we go. One of our larvae is almost gone because of that hit from Pugo, but we only lost one hit because of Pugo instead of the normal tree. So that's nine points in one card, which is always nice. Then we get the Katakan, and of course they're working on the Thrive stack as well, which is really nice for them. That goes up to 27, so I'm five points ahead. Well, technically six. But of course, those are, that's five tribe units, so he gains five points every turn. I could do tribe one more time with Weigern and then end it after that. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. So Weigern on the field with 13 and five armor. And then end it there. Because I think I'm far enough ahead to make this work. There we go, tribe keeps going. So I am going to end it there. Um... So that keeps being 5 points ahead, but I gain another point, so that's 10 points. So it needs to play at least 5 points to make that work. I'm gonna end it there. 
and then hope I'm getting the Kikimor Queen in the next two rounds. So the reason why I'm passing now, I do get two extra points, because I'm actually going to 11 since the Queen still has one armor. And he needs to actually destroy one of his units. So that only gets him to 50 and that makes us equal again. There we go. That's where I wanted to go. I thought I was far enough ahead. So that's basically what you want to do. Just overpower your enemy with enough units to make that work. So now he needed to waste his uh, old spear tip there as well. Which is not something they usually want to do. So that gives us card advantage. Um, Glusty Warp might work. I'm going to try and get rid of maybe the natural selection um and the ice giant i'm not getting the kikimor queen that's not too bad um let's just get rid of the andrega eggs and end it like that i can keep glusty just as a nice finisher and let's hope for the kikimor queen because that's my basic combo so let's pause if we don't get the Kikimor Queen, I'll show up. Oh, never mind, there it is. There it is. So, and we even get the Whispering Hillock on top of that. I might actually keep it. And let's get rid of Predatory Dive and Lacerate. Okay, okay. So if you've seen my videos, you know what's going to happen next. I'm going to use the Andrega Larva first, since those get Thrive as well. And we got double those. Let's place them down. And then we're going to start with the Kikimor Queen combo. The Kikimor uh, Queen is uh, an interesting card since whenever this unit's drive is triggered, you boost all allied insectoids in this row by one. So that means every time the Kikimor Queen gains drive, they actually get another point for each of the insectoids on the row as well. So I'm going to show you that right now because with Garantir, you can actually use Garantir make another Kikimor Queen which starts at 1 but Garanti is higher so that triggers the Thrive and triggers everything right next to that as well. So there we go. So that's our first turn. Well, our second turn but our first step towards getting more and more of those Kikimor Queens on the field. Because we're gonna duplicate them and because we can duplicate them that effect is gonna keep stacking. So every time we're getting a stronger unit that's gonna grow bigger and bigger and bigger as you'll see snowballing really quickly. So he got lucky there. He got his uh, his own drone with that. Um, but now we can use the Whispering Hillock. Uh, you know what? I'm actually going to put another single drone over there. Because I need to be careful not to fill the road too much. But with the Whispering Hillock, I can replay Garantir. Whispering Hillock is an organic card, so we get another drone. And then I use Garantir again in the same matter. Throwing another Kikimor Queen on top of that. Both that one and that one is going to try, so that's a double boost. And we're already 10 points ahead with the round just started. And then your opponent has a choice, of course. They can try and take it out, which is not going to work in this particular fashion. Because, of course, uh, I can do the same thing over there. But now that we've done that, we can place the real Kikimor Queen, the final Kikimor Queen, on the board as well. I'm going to actually put one more drone down over there. There we go. And put the Kikimor Queen on the bottom row. That's going to trigger both the top one and the bottom one for more points for us. So with that, he has a few Thrive units, but that's not going to really work, I think, because... Hmm. I'm going to put down the Cave Troll first. The reason for that is that it's seven, so I can get three Thrive ticks from that alone. Uh, and I'm gonna put that on the back row so he can't target it because the cave troll has defender status and protects all units on their row and that triggers drive three times again. So 30 points ahead with the same amount of cards which is perfectly where we want to go. We can actually use Whispers Tribute to get a lacerate down on that row so I'm also keeping a close eye on the amount of units on my row because this is the eighth card on that row and I can only play uh, nine on that row. So if I play Whispers, I actually save enough space to play another card in a second. Uh, un unless I actually get uh, fucked here and get another drone on that row, which I'm gonna get. That's not too much of a problem. And then we can end the turn. So there he takes my Vigern out of my deck, which is of course a very smart move. And then we can use the Araka Swarm to actually put more drones on the field. And then I'm going to play Glusty. Glusty on this row. 
and grab those for me. And we got more Thrive Ticks for that entirety over there. And that gets us to 90 points already with uh, three more cards in the bag. I think I pretty much have this with the Andrega Warrior is the reason why I kept this row, uh, well, empty enough to have one more slot. Because if I put that in between here, we actually get two consumes and another Thrive trigger. The Griffin sadly needs to go to a 5 power drone, but that's not too bad. We get another try from that, so we keep our points. And that's enough for us to get a pass, so if I just put that down over here. We take another Insectoid, we get one unit up to 30 points. And a lot more try where that came from. There we go. And that's how you play the Chitin Charge deck. My opponent even forfeited there, but there we go. First match. Next up is the Immortal Skalaga deck. So with Ursine Ritual, which is um, Svalblood's old ability. Uh, so the damaging your own units ability. We get the Draco Turtle and a lot of extra cards that also all work around the team that your units are pretty much invincible or can take a few hits, which is going to become very important in our next match. There we go, we face the Arakas Queen, and it is actually also the Arakas Queen ability, which means that we're pretty much in the right spot, because this deck is all about dealing damage and receiving it as much as possible. But the Ancrate can actually stay right now, I'm going to get rid of the Heimei Protector, uh, and I get my best combo already with the Draco Turtle and Iris Shade. Let's get rid of the Sapper then, and the Small Blood Cultist. So, first things first, we're going to set up a nice new uh, easy combo with the bronze cards, which is usually the armored Drakkar first. So basically, the Priest and Drakkar combo gives you 5 to 6 points every 2 turns, because the Drakkar resets after two, 2 times he gets hit. So there we go, we can set that up. The Priest gets five points every or 2 points every turn. And every two turns, the armor Drakkar gains another point. So we get Dandelion right Poet there. immediately. So that's a double card play. Which is interesting, because I'm gonna, gonna put the Uncrate Greatsword on that row then, in a second. And we get the Foglets. Okay, okay. Fair enough. So with our little loop going over here, might as well put the Greatsword down. In next turn and got a bit of points. Because this deck isn't extremely put together for the great swords. It's not focused on that. It's more focused on units that can take a hit. So definitely the Dracars, the Draco Turtle, and a lot more units in this deck actually that I don't have in my hand. So Harold, the Queen's Guard, Shield Maiden, and even of course all good immortal combined with Blue Boy Lugals. Those are all great cards that can take a hit. But we can just put the Greatsword down over here. I can even give it the tactical advantage so we get a bit of points on there as well. And we're still ahead. So we got a Nagel Farm, might as well. Might probably be something to take out my 9 pointer there. Which is something I like to do because this deck really focuses on generating some really high powered units. So if this does hap doesn't happen now, that means he probably doesn't have a card to take that out. So Garanti onto the Kikimor Queen. So that's my combo from before. But we are pretty well equipped to deal with that. So we're gonna start simple. If I use the Raiding Fleet on top of the Kikimor Queen, we give that unit bleeding and we get another boat in return for that as well. We can put the Drakkar over here and we can start getting going. The damage it's gonna take is gonna go onto my Greatsword as well. So that's one thing that's great about that. There's a second one. That's gonna trigger the Tribe, but I have a few tricks up my sleeve. So those are going up, and now I can actually use a Yennefer. Yennefer is going to do two damage on everything over there. I need to be careful that I use this correctly. So damage all other units by two. So that's going to do this. There'll be nothing to pick up when I'm done with you. And that gives us a nice boost on the drag cars and everything else. And that's basically it for this turn. Because now we have Bloodthirst 3. The one Kikimor Queen has lost its armor, so we can't really do anything with that. So the Champion Charge is going to go on to the highest Kikimor Queen over there. So breaking that Kikimor Queen combo is all about just taking out the Kikimor Queens themselves. If they aren't there, then this problem just doesn't... It's not present anymore. 
So as you can see, it starts to snowball, but if we use Champion's Charge on the Kikimor Queen, that problem just slowly goes away, because we still generate points every turn as well. So they keep going, I keep getting points, so I'm gonna push this a little bit further even. Because we still have two blood uh, lust on the field, so every time our Dracos now gain two points, so that's six points every two turns. But with a second priest, we actually boost that up to uh, 12 points every turn, which is basically unstoppable. There we go. So there we go, up to nine. But those points come into my direction again. Um, I could play my Draco Turtle, but then I just play my uh, my full hand there. I'm only eight points behind, and I get eight from actually using my ability a bit more. Um, if I use the Uncrate Great Sword, I actually get enough points just by doing this because I get four from the. He could pass, but then I'm just... You know what? I'm just going to give one of these a little a little tick. There we go. And then the turn like that. And that should get us enough points to go over that again. Makes it a bit harder for my opponent to calculate what is going on as well. So the ghoul consumer bronze unit in your graveyard. I don't know what that is going to be. Yeah, there was another frost roll in there. So that keeps boosting that. That's 11 points ahead. Do I? I can basically win this, but then I play, I lose my biggest asset here, the Draco Turtle. I probably should, because otherwise I'm not going to win this. If I do six, no, I'm 11 points behind, so I definitely need to do something. So Draco Turtle over here. That gives us six more points and we get just over that. And we get the Cave Troll, but the Cave Troll does trigger Tribe. But the tribe is only 5 points at this point, so that's 11. 11 is still too far away, so I do need to use Iris now. I, am I could take away the armor from that one, but it's more beneficial for me if I just take it from the Draco Turtle over here. And pass. Should probably pass. Um, I'm going to use it one more time to get the most out of my points here, and then pass. Because that gives me 8 more points on top of that. That makes him sweat a bit. There we go. Just wanted to make sure I got that first round. Because now I could actually force them to play out the better cards. I do get all geared. Uh, I don't have a use for the Heimei Protector. And the Svalblood Cultist. We get the Queen's cards. I'm just gonna pass, right? Because I don't wanna I don't wanna risk anything, so let's pass. And then the final round is all about uh not mm, not nut. Nut nut. Arakas Venom maybe. Arakas Venom might be nice to get rid of those first tribe units. So let's get rid of the shield maidens, because I don't have any use for that. And the stunning blow. The stunning blow is gonna be perfect to take out Vigern. Because I'm assuming there's gonna be a Vigern in there. So and Draga Larva, we can take those out immediately. So, uh, no such luck for you. Articles Venom right on top of that. So that's why that is in my deck, to take out those annoying creatures. And then we get an Articles Drone probably for a Griffin. Yes. Did think something like that was going to happen. Then I'm going to play my Drummond Queen's card. You're good. Like this. Very good. And then another Griffin over there, which is fine. So that's just 16 points. And then my biggie, Old Gear the Immortal, which is yeah, basically the Immortal card. I can actually damage my Queen's card here and make a new one, which gets us almost equal, even though he did some pretty nice things with those Griffins. Then an Ice Giant, which is fine. It's all fine. Then we can use a Tyrku Plunderer. I could technically use that on the Queen's card just to keep that going a bit longer. Seems we've hauled a good catch today. There we go, on the Queen's card, make another one over there, we're only one point behind anymore. So if they have Vigern, they need to use Vigern right now. If they don't, they don't, but there's another Ghoul. That's probably gonna be five, yeah, so that's just six points. 
And then we use our one damage left on the Queen's card. We get another Queen's card in return. And then we can use not the Callus on Olgir the Mortal and give ourselves some extra damage. And then Stunning Blow is going to have to end this. I'm hoping for the Vigern. I'm not really sure what's going on now. So that's Olsgal. Olsgal has probably about 10 points left. Oh, 6 points. So we definitely have that. They even forfeited. So there we go. Definitely able to hold its own this deck. And the last deck we're going to demo today is the last we also used. No, not the last one, because the Skelligan one was the last one we used. But that was on stream. I never made a separate episode for that. But the Obey the Empire deck. It's a double cross deck with a lot of assimilate units, but also a bit of damage dealers, so we can handle all of that. With Trist Telekinesis and Leto Kingslayer, combined with the hand gate sword and a few other special cards that you don't usually find in an assimilate deck so this is the deck composition as you can see i'm just going to go through it really quickly so you can copy it from yourself all the deck compositions will be in the description down below as well if you want to check those out and uh, if you want to give me some feedback that's also always appreciated so and of course, when you're playing Nilfgaard, you usually play against another Nilfgaard with Enslave instead of Double Cross. But we might be able to pull this out. So this is a pretty good hand to start with. We get Glynis as a first... Victories require a first one. Sacrifice. Interesting. So I could technically say we just try and take that over, but we can't. So with Simulate, it's all about setup. You want to have a few cards on the field, like he is doing at the moment, Rado Volt. Uh, with the Glynis card and just start with our own assimilate Long units over here. I'm not gonna take out the Glynis, I know he will probably be able to steamroll over me in this first round, but then at least he doesn't have the Glynis anymore for the next round. Okay, so Sweers took over my assimilate units, to it, which is fine I suppose, which allows us to use Ramon to play a soldier from our hand right next to ourselves. And he gets a bit more armor where that comes from. There we go. And there we have Artorius, which is definitely a normal uh, selection for that. We're going to do pretty much the same thing. So let's use... Although I could also work with Glynis here. Um, I don't want to fall into that trap though. So let's use Artorius. Which gets us another Assimilate. Um, I might as well use the two damage over there. If I can get that damage in, that we might be able to take Arthurius for ourselves. He might be a bit scared of that as well. And he passes. Which is interesting. This is really weird. That's a really early point to start passing. I'm not going to spend too much of my better units. Just get the defender going over here. And get that battle preparation going, and then end the turn, and then use the Duchess Informant to just grab the older Art Fane and grab that over here. So that's 28. And that's done. That's really early to pass. I haven't really used my best units just yet. And I mean, I'm just going to pass the next round. There's a bit of delay on the UI at the moment because they changed it, so my animations roll out on my side and then they roll out a bit longer on the opponent's side which is why this takes so long but otherwise we're pretty much fine let's get rid of all those tactics and then of course we lose the second round but in the next round we might be able to pull this straight so next round is where everything comes together uh but we're gonna have to be careful one purification definitely the, the assassination i can go without hefty health is always nice you know what, let's keep the Slave Hunter and get rid of the Cavalry instead. Because uh, I want to keep everything else just the way it is. Like that. And then, oh, oh, I have another one. I have another one. Maybe get rid of Tourney Joust. I'm going to... Oh, I'm going to regret this. Caltarella. So. Shuffle a card from your graveyard back into your deck. That's probably going to be Glynis, right? Because I can check out his graveyard. No, not Glynis. Definitely something else. Um, and it's shuffled in the graveyard, so that's fine. Should probably start with... Um, do I start with Glynis or not? 
I think I'm gonna start simple, and let's just start with the slave hunter. Ah, this one's got spirit. Like that. We get our first bribery, which is rather quick for that. And then, of course, Triss. Triss is always nice, because I have her ready here as well. I will not let this become a second Sodom. And I think I'm going to even risk it with an early double cross. Experimental remedy and play a bronze unit from my graveyard. So that's the slave hunter again. So then, are we going to get lucky? I think we should probably do that, right? Just play Glynis. Play Glynis. You do the Emperor proud. Oh. Do double cross. Aha. And then just do Damien. And Damien right here. To my dying breath. And since it's in between there, oh he can actually enslave it as well, which is gonna be annoying, but there we go. I do have another assassination ready if need be. But I've seen his hand and this is not going to end well, I'm afraid. Oh, wow. Vigilance is a virtue. Yeah. Um, well played. Impressive. So that's going to hurt unless I can stop him now. Oh, he's, I'm not going to be able to stop him now. Because I need to play two units to actually stop him. So I could take out one. I definitely need to take out one, so... Yeah, that's gonna have to be Triss. Triss Sarkinesis, hopefully into an assassination. Right there on top of Damien de Latour. De Latour. De Latour, right? It's just de Latour, yeah. Okay. That's annoying. And there goes Enslave again. That is so annoying. Really, really annoying. And I know we can take out my Glynis in one go as well. So I'm definitely not gonna win this, sadly. Destroy an enemy unit, and your opponent summons a top unit from the deck. An and it's gonna be an Imperial Diviner instead. Okay. Um, and Slave is still there as well. So I'm just gonna put down some more Diviners. I don't really care. Damage an enemy by two or four. That's four. Oh, for fuck's sake, I hate Nilfgaard. I really hate Nilfgaard. Um, just out of Kinesis, just in case. Just in case I might be able to pull a card somehow. Somehow, because I still have the Hand Gate Sword, so if I grab that... And there goes another one, of course. Aha! But, you dumbass, I'm gonna grab that. No one can Thank you very much. Because that's my card. Um, and then grab a bronze unit from my opponent's graveyard. My prescription. A bit of that's gonna be the Duchess Informant first. It's gonna grab that as well. And then another Slave Hunter. And that Slave Hunter goes on to the Duchess Informant. That was a lot of cards. And then we have a lock. The lock is not that bad, but at least I got to show off a, a fancy combo there. And then Hefty held in the back. Can use that in a second. Can still reset the unit and do two damage on every unit on a single row. Look at the first three cards on the top of your deck and play one. Turn each house on top of the Hefty held, of course. And then we get Mano. There we go. That's down. But then we got Mano on top of Bribery. Bribery with... Ooh. Do I get Damien? I'm gonna do Damien again. Let's put that in between here. And refresh that double cross. I knew that was going to happen, but damage enough guardian enemy unit by seven. 
that's gonna take out that, which is fine. <clears throat> and do we do surrender now or later? Uh, let's just reset now, because I don't think that's gonna go that much higher than it was before. So I let's just reset that. this one. That gets us four points, four measly points, and then surrender is gonna be my last one. So sadly, I haven't won, but that kind of shows you the versatility of Nilfgaard, both by your opponent and by my own deck. So reveal the top unit from your opponent's deck and then damage yourself. Oh wow, he got really lucky there again. Uh, so that's 10 points, so that's going to be the most now. So let's just do that. And we're only 10 points behind with a bit of bad luck. But there we go, that's another demonstration of the double crawl stack. You can check out my full uh, laddering video for that if you want to see some more interesting battles there. We're actually won. But we weren't able to get to rank 8 in this video, but at least I got to show you all the different decks we made in this season, so we can start moving forward from there. So next season we'll probably start looking at some Scoia'tael decks, and some Northern Realms decks, and some Syndicate decks to kind of round out those uh, factions at the moment, in the state that they are in right now. We'll probably get some more updates in the next season as well, so that's probably, that's why I'm gonna have uh, just a normal laddering video next time, just uh, in anticipation of those next changes. Thank you guys so much for watching, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and if you have any more remarks on my decks, any more tips, any more uh, advice you can give your fellow Gwent players, don't hesitate to leave anything, uh, something in the comments down below. So thank you guys so much for watching, hope to see you guys in the next episode of Gwent Edge. Goodbye!